So, stranger. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> uh, that's not good. <laughs> Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with Cirque Works Art Labs. Welcome to the Underground Laboratory, where we create robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. We're going to talk about something today that features a lot of threats to humanity uh, from somewhere. I don't know if they're not really aliens, maybe alternate dimensions. Uh, but we're t of course we're talking about Stranger Things because Stranger Things Two has dropped, and man, it is, in my opinion, is just as good as the first. Um, so you know, after after watching that I just got so psyched up and just like last year I don't do a lot of fan art on this channel but uh, I, I just there's certain things that just get me and I just got to do some artwork for so today I'm gonna be working on uh, Will Byers illustration and we're gonna do it all digital this time unlike what we did last time around when Stranger Things the original first came out we did some marker drawing but we're gonna try some digital stuff uh, some different techniques I'm gonna try out we'll talk a little bit about that and we'll talk about Stranger Things as far as spoilers go I'm gonna try to avoid spoilers if I start getting into something where I need to talk about something that's maybe spoilers I will give you guys all a warning because I hate it when people spoil stuff for me and I don't want to do that for you guys but anyway I will definitely try to keep you know I will let you know whether it's light spoilers heavy spoilers anything like that and uh, I will try to sort of avoid some of that altogether but if I do get in a situation where I just have to talk about something because I get pretty excited when talking about this stuff um, I will give you guys a little warning so anyway so I want to get to the actual drawing and uh, yeah so let's do this all right so this is the first of what will hopefully be a few uh, stranger things drawing on this channel and I'm uh, one of the reasons why I'm doing this uh, is because I'm trying to stretch my digital muscles and I guess when I say that it's kind of weird because really I mean the majority of what I do is digital but certain things that I do, I do traditionally, and one of those things is sketching. So I am going to try to do, at least with this first one, do more digital sketching. I think moving forward, um, it may be easier just to sketch traditionally because I've got my sketchbook with me and I can do it when I'm out and about. And I really, I don't have, I mean, I don't have any kind of portable digital way of drawing. Like I don't have an iPad Pro or anything like that. I have a Cintiq, but it's like a big one and I can't really like lug it around. So so I'm going to do, um, at least with this first one, I'm going to sketch it digitally. Uh, but I think the mo most of these will be all, at least after the sketching phase, will be all digital. Um, unlike the previous uh, go-around I did with Stranger Things, where I did all those totally traditional with marker and, and pen and ink and everything. But anyway, so what I'm doing now is I'm doing uh, just sort of the gesture drawing of Will Byers, trying to get his character... Uh, characteristics and uh, just just uh, I'm sort of kind of trying out a new style but not exactly it's I, I mean these characters could probably fit in uh, my comic book Young and the Dead which is sort of a kids versus zombies story and they're I mean they could kind of fit in that universe they're similar to that style they changed a little bit as far as proportions trying to go a little more cartoony and still kind of capture their personality and their look and everything um, but man these characters are so fun to draw and it's just I, I don't know what it is like I mean I like superheroes I watch like like watching superhero comics and things like that but when I illustrate when I do comics most of the characters are you know they're just kind of plain clothes whether it's kids or whatever I don't draw a lot of like super heroic type people I don't know why that is I just I just kind of like drawing you know people in regular clothing and things like that it's just fun to draw um, but anyway so now I'm kind of going back to the way I normally illustrate um, when I do digital and this is the way I do my prints and things like that but I'm just doing a uh, right there you just saw I kind of did with the with the illustrator pen tool um, I went and did an outline of that character because I like that I like that sort of bold outline around my characters now this is a little different from what I'm used to doing and I'm using a new tool called it's well it's it's called the blob tool and it's in illustrator but it allows you to do and I'm gonna do the rest of this illustration pretty much with the blob tool when I get into color and everything I'll use that tool as well uh, normally what I'll do is this stage that I'm working on now normally it's still the pen tool and I'll go in with the width tool in illustrator and I'll kind of taper the lines and make different line weights and everything but this is more you know 
with this blob tool allows you to do more sketching just like you would digitally in whatever uh, program. And to let you guys know, the previous, um, the previous stage where I was just sketching, I did that in Photoshop. So I sketched that in Photoshop, brought it in Illustrator. Now I'm going to pretty much finish the rest of this, I think, in Illustrator. Um, and again, it's this. This kind of works just almost like a digital, uh, digital inking tool. Um, so, so just kind of fill in, and you can kind of see. You know, you're able to get different line weights, and you can vary that. But I want to do more with the uh, with the blob tool, especially when coloring, because normally what I do is I'll I'll do the digital inking in Illustrator with the pen tool, bring it into Photoshop, and I'll do my coloring. And it's hard to get like a really smooth. The one thing that Illustrator does is it kind of corrects, and maybe there's something in Photoshop that does this too, I don't know. But it, it allows you to, I mean, when you draw it kind of, and you can change this, but there's, if, you, if it's kind of wobbly a little bit, it'll straighten it out a little bit. So um, that's one of the things that, that really doesn't work very well when I'm working in Photoshop. Sometimes you can see that my color line's getting a little jittery, but when you're working with the um, blob tool, and I think I think go, I think at some point I think I'll just do a whole demo with the blob tool and really get into the nitty gritty and explaining how to do it because it really is cool. And a couple people that watch my channel recommended that I should try drawing with it, and I'm glad I did because it I, I'm really digging it, um, and I can kind of get that same style that I used to, and uh, but it just it it works a lot better. So. Um, so I'm having fun with it. Right now I'm just kind of doing my flatting and then I'm going to go in and add some sh shading and some highlights and things like that. But I wanted to also talk about Stranger Things um, and particularly why I'm doing Will Byers as the first, is my first character in this in this series. Um, when I did the first go round, I didn't do Will and there were, I think I got some comments saying, oh you should do Will and everything. And I love that character and, but in the, in the first one and I'm, I'm gonna throw this out right now kind of sort of spoiler uh, uh, warnings just for the first season if you haven't seen the first season um, which I hope everyone's seen the first season and these aren't gonna be major spoilers but you know will was sort of he was an integral part of the show but he was in the upside down and there were a few flashbacks and everything but uh, pretty much from the moment he was in the upside down for them and then the moment he got back he was sort of out of the show um, so even though he's a very important part of the story, everything revolves around him, you didn't see him much on screen. So you didn't really, I mean, you got to know him a little bit, but man, with this second season, I was just blown away by the character, not only the character, but the acting chops of the actor who played him. I mean, it, it's like, I think the, the creators, the Duffer Brothers, they must have they must have known where they were going, you know. In this, I'm, and I'm pretty sure that's the case. Where they're going to be going with the second season, and it's almost like they were holding on to this kid because you really don't see what he can do as far as acting until until this season. And man, he like just blew me away how good he was, and and oh, I mean, just the stuff that he had to do and and the way he pulled it off. I mean. Um, because you wouldn't know that you would he just didn't have enough screen time for, for you really to to get that from the first from the first season but man it's almost like in when when you watch the first season and you see 11 and and how great her performance was the actress who played 11 um I mean, this is the same thing in the second season is, is, is I think it's, I, I'm, I don't want to mispronounce the name, Noah Schnapp, I think, is the, is the actor who plays Will, but just incredible. I mean, he was like the breakout performance, and the weird thing was, is he was there from the beginning, you just didn't see it, but, but just what he had to go through and, and, and everything in this series, I mean, and, I mean, yeah, I was going to say this season, but this, actually this whole series, um, uh, just incredible. So I definitely, he was my first choice and you know, there's some newer characters, maybe we'll get along, around to them as well. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I, again, I was just really, really impressed. I think he carry a lot of, and the weird thing was that, um, I, it's just, it's, it's a different, this, this time around is just different. Like some of the, some of the characters got a little more screen time, like the, like Mike, he wasn't. He didn't seem as present as he was in the in the last one. I mean, he, he got to do some important parts, and maybe that was because um, the actor was out 
I think he was filming it while maybe while they were shooting this or something. But but it didn't seem like it didn't seem like we were missing him. I mean, he was again he had important parts, but I guess that's just sort of the way this kind of series is going to play out. And I'm super excited to where it goes from here. Um, and you know, we'll talk more about this as we go <laughs> as we go and we do some more of these characters. Because I don't know, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with these. Um, I want I want each one to sh again show their personality and show sort of a, I want I want them each to have I don't know I'll throw out the word prop you know here we've got the the crayons and the and drawing and that's what's a big part of it um, this season um, trying to get basically his feelings out with his drawings and let people know kind of kind of what's going on and if you see that if you see this the show you'll you'll know what I'm talking about but. Um, so I definitely wanted to have that. So each one of these characters, I want to, I want to sort of, you know, take a part of their personality and a sort, sort of part of their story. Something is again, I like to tell stories. Now with this, it's, you know, we're just doing a character design. We're not, you can't tell a whole lot of story here, but you get an idea um, based on, you know, how we're presenting it. So. Anyway, so, and again, I just love drawing all these kind of, you know, 80s, it's, it's weird because having been working on for the past, I don't want to say how many years, because, because the amount of issues I have versus how long I've been working on my comic, it's, uh, you know, it's sort of a back, it's, it's, uh, it's sort of a passion project, but it's one that I just work on, it's, um, it's always on the back burner, I work on it a little bit here and there, so it takes me a long time to put out an issue, but, it, my comic book as well takes place in the 80s and everything and and just when I designed my characters they kind of had some of the same clothing and stuff because you know a lot of people they when when they're trying to capture an era um, whether it's the 80s or whatever they'll go back and you can if you search if you go back and you search 80s clothes you're gonna find a lot of crazy stuff which you know maybe you might see in like an MTV music video but more or less people weren't really wearing that that type of clothes maybe a few people um, so I mean it's just kind of I mean this is a little uh, the, the stuff that they wear uh, you know the striped t-shirts and just things like that uh, I, I always call them Garanimals there used to be a brand called Garanimals and they had all these mix and match you know stripes and everything like that and but it's kind of kind of that look but um, but yeah, they, I mean, they really did a good job capturing that. And I try to do the same thing with my comics. So it's almost, like I said, it's almost like if, obviously I don't own the rights to any of the Stranger Things characters, but it'd be cool, you know, to do sort of like a crossover, you know, of course, but now, I mean, <laughs> I'm getting, I mean, I got to focus just on my own comic book and not think of crazy things like that, but it would be fun. And I think they could kind of exist in the same world because I could see how my kid, my kids in my story would interact with the kids in Stranger Things, but um, yeah, this is super fun, and uh, again, this is all, I'm doing this all with the blob tool, so you can kind of see how it works. Um, I, I really do like how it kind of strains the lines up and everything. Now what I'm doing, this, now this is something I couldn't figure out how to do in Illustrator. If any of you guys know, if you're familiar with Illustrator, um, I couldn't figure out how to do color holds in Illustrator. Now if you know what the color holds are, it's basically what I'm doing now where I've got the outlines, all the line work is also in color, it's not just black. Um, now there is a draw inside tool in Illustrator, I mean it's a, it's a function where you can like select something and, and draw inside of it. And I thought I could do that in Illustrator, but I couldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't give me that option. So I don't know how to take something you've drawn with the blob tool and then kind of go over it and change the color. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to do that. So basically what I had to do here is I had to bring my line art and everything into Photoshop and then I just took all the line art and converted it. Or w there's a function that you can select to, so you can, you can draw on it and I forgot what it was. But, but so yeah, so I'm going to have to go into Photoshop to kind of finish this up. But um, now I'm sort of doing my technique that I like to do where it's uh, sort of a sticker, like that old time 80s stickers. Um, and see how jagged it is? I don't like that. So I'm going to pull from the Illustrator a nice cleaner one, throw a little shadow, help it pop out. And yeah, that's Will Byers. All right, so there you have it. That was super fun. I'd like to, I, I want to experiment with that technique a little more and uh, maybe do some more Stranger Things fan art, maybe some more characters, uh, maybe, 
I don't know, there's so many other great characters in this series that I'd like to touch on, like to talk about, and like to illustrate. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know in the comments section and we'll figure out if we want to do that moving forward. If you guys are fans of Stranger Things, which I imagine if you've been it, it, watching for this long that you probably are, I wanted to mention uh, my comic book because I think anyone that's a fan of Stranger Things probably would be into this too. It's called Young and the Dead and it's a kids versus zombies story. It takes place in the 80s. It's kids versus zombies. So uh, yeah, I started writing this thing way before Stranger Things came along when Stranger Things uh, did drop the, the original people were like oh man you got to check this out it's right up your alley it's just like the stuff that you like to do or that you love like Goonies and Monster Squad and all that stuff so anyway Young of the Dead issues one through three are available on my website at cirqueworks.com so I'll see you guys all later that is all hey everyone thanks for joining me here in the art lab there's a lot of other great content on the channel so click that subscribe button and you won't miss a thing if you're an aspiring evil genius visit cirqueworks.com for all your mad science supply needs and if you want to contact me, hit me up in the comments section or follow me on social media. I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you then.